Mishnah Brura, starting Sif Tet. Today, Maran writes, Lakach mi misheno mumche, sarich lebotkan. When you buy tefillin, you have to pay attention to whom has written it and whom you're buying it from. And sometimes it becomes difficult. This day, yesterday we spoke about people who may be buying tefillin online from Amazon, from eBay. And, and it's true, like if you, I, before I wanted to give the shiur yesterday, I didn't even know that there's a market on eBay for tefillin. And uh, the truth is, even though that we mentioned, perhaps now there's based on the shah and the mishnah would be mutar to buy it because the goyim normally do not, they're not writing tefillin, even though that I wouldn't be surprised if, um, if you could find um, a, a scam in this, in this thing, because uh, for instance, what, what, has, what has happened in past five years, now you buy mezuzot also on, on Amazon and, and on eBay, the mezuzah covers I'm talking about, and they come with a pasul mezuzah next to them. A printed mezuzah, it's a decent ktav, but it's printed on a piece of paper. That's a thicker paper, looks like a cloth. Of course, it's absolutely it's pasul. So I wouldn't be surprised. Um, there are plenty of charlatans out there. I wouldn't be surprised if somebody would buy cheap um, fill in ktiot and put anything or nothing inside and just sew it up and sell it because they would actually gain money, anything for money people. So you have to be very careful what, what you do actually and where, where you buy it from. So even if you assume, like we mentioned yesterday, that perhaps, perhaps would be, um, you know, mutar to buy from any of these things, you have to certainly check the tefillin. And here Maran says, lakach mi mi mumche. It says, first of all, in Sif Chet, which we skip, Sif Chet, Maran says, en kachin ela mina mumche. You have to only buy tefillin from a mumche, from someone that is an expert in not just writing tefillin and not just being yereshamayim, but shbaki bechaserot v'yeterot that you are baki in chaserot v'yeterot. This is the mezuzah that I showed some of you that is actually written that's missing a name of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. You know, I, I've given this to many people and they look at it for 10 minutes. They can't find why it's Pasul and yet I've written in the back of it Pasul, so it's for sure Pasul, um, hopefully. And, and it says, um, all the all the letters properly. They look, 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 and then I tell them read the first pasuk. The first pasuk says Shema Israel Hashem Elokeinu Echad. It's missing one youth came off K in the. I say it's unbelievable. But then, if you take a take a look, like the mezuzot and letotafot, for instance, right? The, the first time it says that totafot is lame tet tet hey tet tough. Right, that's the doesn't have any marks, not even one. The second it says with one wav. It's lamet tet vav tet peitas. None of them is letotafot with two vavs. So these are chaserot ve'eterot. It's the same, same word. What's written differently. So if you're not um, well versed in which one is what and how to write them, yeah. So that or mezuzot, right? Mezuzot is written mem zayin zayin vav taf, not mem zayin vav zayin. So if if a person does not know these things, then you get yourself into trouble by writing. Um, tefillin and mezuzot and certainly Sefer Torah. So therefore, any kachin, we don't buy them um, from a person that does not know the chaserot v'yeterot very well. Like the Gemara says in Masechet Menachot, Daf Membet Amud Bet, on 42b, that a person has to buy only from a person that really knows not just the halachot, but also knows the chaserot v'yeterot. He's a well-versed and, and expert in those um, in, in those discrepancies and differences between different parts of uh, the Torah. But if you did get them, or by, by the way, this is even, says the Mishnah Bura and says the Kafachaim, this is even if you are planning to check it. In other words, if the reason is because maybe 
he wrote the mezuzot for the wav in the middle of the zayins or the totafot. He wrote the first one like the second, second one like the first. So you say, well, you know what? It's not because the guy is not baki, but I'm going to go get it checked with a sofer that's baki. So who cares if the person that wrote it is baki or not, right? So first of all, first of all, I have, I have to remind us of uh, Rav Moshe Feinstein that I mentioned once before. Rav Moshe Feinstein has a tshuva. Somebody got a mezuzah and he saw the mezuzah did not have tagin, right? Didn't have the crowns on the otiot, which this mezuzah that I'm looking right now at also is missing um, all of the, most of the tagin. Well, yeah. Most of the tagin that traditionally um, are there is not here, right? So you, you tell yourself, okay, so it's kasher. And Ramosh Faisal also says, wait a second, you tell me that if you don't put tagin, but the evidence is kasher. So why am I saying it's pasuk? Ramosh says pasuk. Why? This is because if the sofer did not put tagin in a society that everyone puts tagin, what else he did not do? Who knows? Did he even have kavanah when he wrote the name of Hashem? Or did he maybe even miss one of the names of Hashem, like this guy over here? You never know. So you, once you find a little bit of downside in a sofer, already the question mark becomes much bigger because there's so many things that he cannot check if you are not there at the time that he's writing it. So therefore you have to be mindful of all of those halakhot. But be that as it may, even if you says the Mishnah, even if you're planning to actually check it, still you should not get from him because maybe you're going to become an atzin. Maybe you're going to be lazy and you're actually not going to end up doing it. You know, how we, we plan to do a lot of things. Yeah, I'm going to check this, especially tefillin. It's not like mezuzah. Even mezuzah, we're atzin. We're, we're lazy. Right? It's a minhag. That by Chodesh Elul, it's not Mikarati. Mikarati, every three and a half years, um, you want to check your uh, your mezuzot, right? But there's a minhag that every Elul people check their mezuzot. It's a school for you. I mean, Raim is coming up. How many people actually do it? You have to go take them off of the doorpost, take it out, take it to the sofer, perhaps get other mezuzot. Meanwhile, we are at sale, you become. Lazy, so we worry, especially tefillin, that you have to rip the the tefirot and the the sinews that are sewed up with and open it, and then you have to check them and wrap them back up and put them back in, and then perhaps professionally cement back and paint the the crack and sew it up again. All of those things is a hard thing to do. So therefore, we worry he's not going to end up doing it. He's going to say, ah, it's okay. And the next thing you know, you're putting on this feeling for years before you check it, and it may actually be pasul, and you're getting yourself into trouble. So therefore, says um, the Mishnah Bura, that's the pshat in Maran. Even if you're planning to check it, you still should not get from someone that's not baki. The Ben Ishchai Arav Shalom in Torah Lishma, we generally assume that Ben Ishchai wrote the Sefer Torah Lishma, Shredotu Shuvot Torah Lishma. In Torah Lishma, he says, even if you're actually going to Plan on checking it and checking. It still, should not get it from a mumke. Why? Not just because the Iraqis are more machmir and everything, but because that's, that's, that was that was you. But but because he says it's bizayon to the tefillin that you're gonna buy it and right off the store you're gonna go rip the, the things and open up the thing. It's not it's it's not the cover thing. It's, it's not respectful and therefore you should not do it. Says the mission. Now what happens if you did do it? You bought from somebody that is not necessarily baki in chaserot with. If you bought it from somebody that's not an expert, you immediately need to check them, right? If you bought a hundred pairs of tefillin, I was just speaking to one of my friends. Um, he said he, he buys thousands of mezuzot every, every year and dozens of pairs of tefillin. He actually is one of the people who are very involved with finding people who are not putting mezuzot on their, their things and convincing them to, to get mezuzot. Beautiful, right? And those who are, don't have tefillin or their tefillins are not adequate, he helps them buy tefillin. So a tremendous personality. So you have, you, let's imagine you bought a few dozens of, uh, of pairs, a hundred pairs of tefillin. Do you have to check all of them? Yes or no? Yes, we have a lot of kanaim here. No, you buy, you bought it from Ruben. 
right? You are from Reuben. You have to check all of them. So it depends. If the guy says, I wrote them all myself. The guy says, I wrote them all myself. And they're all in one bundle, yeah. by the bundle the same way. Then you trust him. You only check three of the feelings. Not three sets, but three feelings. Two feelings shall roshes and one shall yad, or vice versa, two shall yad and one shall rosh. The reason you have to do both, you can't just do three shall rosh or three shall yad, it's because there are separate halachot for each one of them. They're, the way that you put them in, the way it's written, the way the cloth of shall yad is, you want to know that the details of halakha have been kept, and why not one on one? Because three is chazaka. You want to do chazaka. So that's what Maran says. Let's read. Out of like how many pairs? 100 pairs, even more than 100 oh, pairs. Like if it's a thousand, you need to check three. Three. If all of them were written by the same person and you could trust him because they're all bundled the same way. But if you see some of them are in this type of you know, wrapping, the other ones are in a different wrapping, then you're not going to trust the person. Every bundle, you have to check three um, to fill in from. So Maran writes, let's just read the words. We already said it outside. Says Maran, hundred pairs, bodek men shalosh. You check shalosh ktsiot, shtaim shal rosh v'achat shal yad, o shtaim shal yad v'achat shal rosh. Im metza'an k'sherim, uchzak ze ha'ish v'arek kulam k'sherim. If all three were completely fine, kasher, and good, then this person already has chazaka that he's fine. Ve'ena sha'ar sarich v'dika. The rest of the tefillins don't need to be checked. Ve'im lekacha and svatim svatim. But if you bought them and they're in different bundles, they're bundled in different... <laughs> you know, the different ways or in different bundles, then then you know that this guy has not written it himself. He is what we call a socher. He is a merchant of tefillin. He is bought it from different people. So then for sure you don't know who he bought it from, right? And therefore every bundle you have to check three. Now, the Mamar Mordechai writes, what if they got mixed? Then what do you do? Got mixed. What do you do? You have to check all of them, every single one. So you don't know which one came from which. So the whole chazaka of three does not apply anymore. You have to check every single one of the tefillins. No, the, the bundles got mixed. In other words, you had hundred. Hundred were in, let's say, um, you know, twenty-five uh, bundles of of four. Now the bundles were open and the feelings got mixed. So you don't know which one is from which bundle. Then you have to check every single one um, of, of the hundred in order to in, ensure. This is the Mamar Murkai, one of the Sephardi Gedolim. He says you have to check all of them to make sure that they're all cash. Even if it's the same scribe? No, if the same scribe and you could trust is the from, from the same scribe. And this is a case that came in bundles, so you're not trusting it. You know that he's a, so he's a, a merchant, right? So therefore, you have to check. Now, says the tefillin ve'amar. If someone sells you a tefillin ve'amar she'ayushel adam gadol, and he tells you this was from this is tefillin of a big rabbi. I says this was Hamvadias uh, tefillin. Now, nowadays. You have to question yourself, you know, this is a market for uh, for celebrity films, right? Like, you know, back in the day, it was not necessarily a, so, I was just telling you, if the guy, or Derek Agav, he, sa he says in a way that is Messiah Lefitumo, he told you, this is a feeling of a rav of a town, whatever it is, his son sold it to me, I'm selling it to you, he says, the, the Shukharuch Neeman, he is trusted, Right, if he's otherwise a trustworthy person, the enam sikhim bedika, and those feelings do not need to be checked because even though that the merchant is telling you, I don't know who wrote it, I just know that this is the feeling of the Rav of town. Adam Gadol, the Hacham. So already is a chazaka that he bought the proper feeling, so you don't have to check it. Right? Again, nowadays you have to take this with a grain of or a spoon of salt, right? Because a lot of things are, uh, you know, 
Yeah, the Fleet of Ben Ishchai, which is completely pasul now, was sold for, I don't know how much. How much was it? Something like that. It's close to $200,000 uh, because it's not even a piece of history, really, or at least. But uh, it's not like hundreds and hundreds of years of, of age. It's 100 years old, you know. I have a feeling that's 100 years old. It's my grandfather's feeling. No, he actually went to Baghdad in the time of Ben Shai. He did. I have the Megillah, if you've seen uh, our family Megillah, that was bought from, uh, I think, the same software that wrote Ben Shai's things. And, you know, okay, fine. So that's, uh, he went to Baghdad and he got, uh, he got a, a Megillah, which we have, and a Sefer Torah, which my uncle's secretary is uh, sitting in Giniza of some shul probably right now to go uh, retrieve it. But nevertheless, because it's Ben Ishchai, oh, because, because it hasn't been used for so many years, they, they, you know, they decay, basically. And we're going to see that in the next Yifish Chaluch, actually, right? So therefore, Adam Gadol, if you could trust that the person is saying the truth, as Adam Gadol, then en tzrichim bedika. Tefilin shehuchzeku bekashrut, now if you have a tefilin, that already you have a chizkat kashrut, en av tzrichim bedika leolam. This is a seif that all the sofrim hate me to read it out loud. All the, the Judaic stores and those who checked feelings don't, don't you know, it's you know, difficult because if you have a feeling that was that has a chizkat kashrut, you bought a very expensive pair of feeling from a very good sofer. You check the parashiot are amazing. It was checked with computer and you know it was checked with computer and it was checked by a person and it was put together properly. You know, the way it should be. Then that feeling, if you put it on every day and you keep it well, you don't put it in the car in, in 120 degrees, uh, either, if you take care of it properly, that feeling never needs to be checked again. That's the halacha. Right? If you got it a proper, nice, expensive feeling that was done properly, was written properly, checked properly, put in the thing properly, and kept properly afterwards, you don't have to check it ever. Right? But if you don't put them every day, if you put them, you know, once upon a time, you put, you put the tefillin on, then you have to check them every three and a half years. Because if you don't put them, if you take it out, out of out of the box for them to air out and, and so on, they decay much quicker than when you are constantly using them and putting them on properly. Right? It's a question about the straps. Hmm? It's a question about the straps. No, the straps, you take a look at them. The straps is easy to know if it's kasher or pasu, right? Actually, the straps of the Venice High School probably were kasher. The picture looks like they're fine, right? But the, if we talk about the parashiot inside the tefillin, you know, for them not to not to crack, not to decay, and not to get ruined, that's that's what we're speaking of. And the Rumah adds, Ve'im en lo if you don't have a good sofer that could, uh, you know, tear the 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 sinews that are sewed up with and take the um, the parashiot, I'll check it and then sew it back up properly again, then don't check them. Because if you open it and then you can't sew it back up properly, you're worse off than when you started. So therefore, you don't certainly don't want to get yourself into that situation, says the Ramah, just leave them. You can be karadin, you could assume that they have stayed kasher. Says the Mishnah Brura. The olam that you never need to check it. She calls man she chipuyan shalem. So long as the cover is complete, harehen becheskatan. They are in a chazaka of kashrut mikaradin. Be en choshashin shemanim chaka. We're not worried that maybe it got erased or maybe it got cracked or maybe it got um, you know the, the ink deteriorated inside. Right? 
So says the Mishnah Bura, it's it's proper to check them, even though that you know, even even though Mikara din, you don't need to check them. Lechatchila, midat chasidut is to check them once upon a time because some, especially uh, you know, for people who sweat all the time, you know, you're sweating and the zea, the sweat, the heat from it, the moist from it could actually get inside the tefillin um, after a while and it could um, perhaps affect the kashut of tefillin potentially. So even though that we're not worried for that, but it's nachon, um, it's midat chasidut. It's proper to check them once upon a time. But if the, uh, the, the cover of the batim got ripped, or or it fell into the river, into the water, the tefillin bag, then you immediately, before you put them even once, you need to check them. Because maybe they got um, you know, dissolved, I mean, the, the, the writing got, got smudged and became pasul. So that, you, you really need um, to check them. And the Kafachaim says, because um, you're checking them twice in seven years, it, it, when, when, you, when you say it's nachon, when you say it's fit, it's proper to check them, same thing of, of twice in seven years is what we're referring to. Harvadia says, Midat Chasidut is to check them every year in Chodesh Elul, as we mentioned before. But again, that's given that you know you have somebody that checks them and puts them back nicely together. And the uh, Benish Chai says, because of the Ze'ah, because of the sweat thing that we mentioned, if you were sweating when you had that feeling, it was hot, don't just wrap them back up and put them in the bag with all the moist. You know, just try to dry them with a the towel, put them to air out and dry, and then wrap them up and put them back in, wow. into their place, which is, of course, just a practical, practical aitza that we have. So says Mishnah Bura continues that the frakim, that means you, if you sometimes put it on, the chayshin and shema needs apshu, we are worried that they got decayed basically inside because you're not using them. Therefore, once, twice in the Shemitah, that means every three and a half years, you would check them. If you don't have anyone to check them properly and put them back and sew them back up, Rama said that you could just put them and rely on Chazakah. And even you would say Brachas is Chayadam on that because uh, we haven't seen any Re'uta, we haven't seen any downside to it. For all we're concerned, they're a good feeling They've been sewed up properly. They've been kept properly. They never fell into the water. They never experienced any uh, trauma, so to speak, of, of uh, you know, levels of heat and cold. So therefore, you could rely on the chazakat of the kasher and put them on with bracha as well. And um, that is how Mishtabura conquers as well. Now, if you find parashiot of tefillin in a geniza. This would happen all the time. When, when you open uh, a geniza, for those shows who have geniza, oftentimes you find uh, mezuzahs that are kasher, seemingly, or parashiot of tefillin that are seemingly kasher. So what do you do with those? The in Sefer Zichronot is brought that you're not allowed to use those parashiot because first of all, when they're putting geniza, there may be a reason they found that you wouldn't be able to find, right? Look at if this mezuzah will be put in geniza without me writing pasul on the back, someone would take a look at it, say, well, it looks kasher. There's no holes in it, it's written, every letter is written well. Must be someone got a new mezuzah, a better mezuzah, and just put the old ones in the geniza so I could put it on my thing, right? But maybe there is a reason that they put it in the Geniza. Maybe it's, it is something that they found wrong with it, right? And also, you can't use it for a new feeling because maybe that was written not in order. It has to be, remember, it has to be Kesidran. It has to be written in order. Therefore, um, if, you, if you don't know if it was written in order, that's another thing that you have to be careful with as well. And with Zat Hashem, we're going to continue and start if Siman Mem this to come. The Kavanah was so fair too, right? Oh, the Kavanah was so fair.